How easy is it to be Pokemon Red if everything is mono electric type? Dugdrio is now an electric type. Seal is now an electric type. Zapdos is now only an electric type. I'm actually recording this intro before I even start the run, and I'm going to keep doing this throughout the series. I want to give my thoughts on how this run might go, give a prediction of the difficulty, and then at the end, see how close I was. I'm not putting a whole lot of research into this, I'm just giving an off-the-cuff rundown of what I expect. Defensively, the electric type is a bit sparse when it comes to resistances and weaknesses. It resists flying and electric, and only has one weakness being ground. The only flying type we face that I can think of is Rival's Pidgey line, and the only electric types we face are Lieutenant Surge's team, and I'm pretty sure, unless I'm drawing a huge blank, the only Pokemon we encounter that has a damage dealing ground type move is Giovanni's Dugdrio. So I'm thinking this run is going to be pretty simple just because there's very little defensively going on. Future Sokyo note here. This is where I would say that offensively it'll be challenging because I should be implementing the rule where I can only use TMs given to me by gym leaders, but I completely forgot about that rule at the very beginning of this run and did not even think about it again until I was about halfway done. Now the main reason for me banning TMs other than gym leaders TMs is to avoid the teaching heavy hitters like Earthquake, Dig, Ice Beam, stuff like that. And since none of the gym leaders give a good ground type move, thanks Giovanni, I would need to rely on level up learn sets for the late game in this particular run, but that didn't quite happen, which is fine. It didn't change too much and you'll see that. One thing that I did remember to change for this run is the way trade evolutions evolve, making them reach their final evolution all at level 40, which I might extend out to level 45 or 50 in later runs just for difficulty's sake. I figure if the rival can evolve his Kadabra, I should be able to evolve whatever I have to. Okay, end future Sokyo note here. So with all that being said, as my prediction, I'm putting electric types only right in between rock and grass on the easy side of the scale. Go ahead and comment down below what your prediction is and then at the end edit it to match my final ruling so that we all think you're really smart. And without further ado, let's get into the run. I start the run by picking up Bulbasaur and nicknaming it Nicola. I didn't really have a good reason for choosing Bulbasaur here other than I've already started with Squirtle and Charmander in this series, so might as well show Bulbasaur some love. And Nicola in turn shows us some love with a clutch critical hit to win against the first rival fight already off to a good start. I head up to Viridian Forest and do a little bit of training and we encounter a Pikachu. What's great about everything being electric type is Nicola can't be paralyzed by Thundershock. In fact, Nothing can be paralyzed by Thundershock, Thunderbolt, Thunder Punch, or Thunder, but everything can still be affected by Thunder Wave. Leech Seed is viable in this run, remember it had no effect on the Grass type only run. Ground type moves will always hit for super effective damage, and Electric and Flying type moves will always hit for half damage. Heading out of Viridian Forest and Nicola being at level 12, we face the Junior Trainer and Pewter City Gym. Diglett is a 3 hit, Nicola getting another clutch critical. Nicola levels up to level 13 and learns Vine Whip, which uses the special stat, but his base power 35, so it's pretty much just a special tackle. Nicola managed to hit through a few sand attacks from the Sand Shrew and get the victory, meaning we can move on and probably make easy work of Brock. Setting up a Leech Seed on Geodude, it goes down in just three hits. We set up another Leech Seed on Onyx and stall a little bit as it uses Bide, getting some chip damage in with a Leech Seed. And after Bide fails, Onyx goes down in three hits, making Brock a pretty easy fight. Leaving Pewter City, Nicola levels up to level 16 and evolves into Ivysaur, pretty much ensuring we get to Cerulean City with no issues. We make it to the Pokemon Center and I debate whether to pick up the Magikarp so I can have an easy Gyarados because I always underestimate Gyarados in these runs, but I decided if I needed it, I could always get it later with the old rod, so we're just going to move on from here. Getting into Mount Moon, we encounter the second member of our party, Geodude, and I give it the appropriate nickname of Pikachu. I immediately teach Pikachu Mega Punch before this Team Rocket fight, and it does some really good damage, but ultimately I need to swap it to train it, and it levels up and learns Defense Curl, meaning we can start badge boosting Pikachu right away. For those of you not familiar with badge boosting, there are four gym badges in the game that upon obtaining will permanently boost a specific stat of all of your Pokemon by 12.5%. Brock's Boulder Badge boosts Attack permanently by 12.5%, Lieutenant Surge's Thunder Badge boosts Defense, contrary to what it tells you in game, Koga's Soul Badge boosts Speed, and Blaine's Volcano Badge boosts Special. 
That's how it's supposed to work, and it does, unless a stat-altering move is used. When you use a stat-altering move on yourself, or your opponent uses a stat-altering move on you, the badge boost is reapplied. So for example, we're using Defense Scroll on our Pikachu, it boosts our defense, and because one of our stats changes, the badge boost is reapplied, meaning our attack, because we have the Boulder Badge, is raised for free by 12.5%. And that will keep going up by 12.5% every time we use Defense Curl. The stats will of course go back to normal after the battle, and if we level up in battle, the badge boosted stats recalculate back to base stats, so that would be unfortunate. Anyways, we make it to Cerulean City with no real issues. I remember to put Geodude's derpy green sprite on screen, and I trained it up a bit more to the west of Cerulean. With Pikachu at level 16, I take on the Swimmer and Junior Trainer in Misty's gym, winning against both with relative ease before taking on Misty. Pikachu starts setting up badge boosts with Defense Curl, but Staryu lands a crit water gun, taking Pikachu down to 17 HP. Mega Punch does over half, Water Gun takes Pikachu down to 5 HP, and I swap into Nicola, who finishes the Staryu off. Misty sends Starmie out, and Nicola hits the first Leech Seed, but I didn't see the confirmation, so after taking some good damage from Tackle, it of course fails a second Leech Seed. Starmie hits with a massive Bubble Beam crit, taking Nicola down to 2 HP, and I misclicked and went for Growl. Overall, not doing too great, and I have no healing items, so yeah, we end up losing that one. Instead of facing Misty again though, let's take on Rival north of Cerulean. Rival of course sends out Pidgeotto, and Pikachu's Mega Punch is going to be a 3 hit, and we don't get Sand Attack, which is huge. Rival sends out Abra, and I use it to badge boost all the way up, Okoing the Abra and Rattata, but we get a level up, losing our boost just before Charmander. It doesn't do too much to Pikachu though, allowing for an easy 2 hit with a lucky crit. Heading to the cape above Cerulean, Pikachu levels up to level 21 and wants to learn self-destruct, and I must ask, when will I ever have the opportunity to unironically use self-destruct in the playthrough? So you know what, I'm teaching it over rock throw because that move's useless. After helping Bill with his problems, we come back down to Cerulean, I take on the Team Rocket member who's minding his own business. Nicola takes out Machop with no issue, and the Rocket sends out Drowsy. Nicola gets off a Leech Seed and Poison Powder on the Drowsy, doing some pretty good chip damage on it, but Drowsy counters with Hypnosis. So I swap into Pikachu, but it must have known what I was gonna do because it used Hypnosis on Pikachu too. But with Drowsy's insistence, Pikachu's high defense, and that chip damage draining Drowsy's health, it's no use, and we confirm that Nicola and Pikachu are so good that they can beat a Team Rocket Grunt in their sleep. Coming off that win high, it's time for a rematch with Misty. I start setting up Defense Curl with Pikachu, and Staryu's Water Gun isn't doing near as much damage as before. After setting up a bit, Mega Punch does well over half, ensuring an easy two hit. Misty sends Starmie out, and without hesitation, I go for self-destruct, easily getting the Oko and earning us the Cascade Badge. Making our way south to Vermilion City, we make it to the SSN, and I pick up Body Slam, teaching it over Tackle for a much more reliable and powerful move for Pikachu. And after fighting all the trainers on the SSN, talking about a Butterfinger cake I recently made that was extremely tasty and really, really bad for you, recipe in the description, and getting the team up to level 24, it's time to take on SSN Rival. Rival sends out Pidgeotto, and I start setting up Leech Seed and Poison Powder just as a failsafe for if it hits too many sand attacks. After it goes down and Raticate comes out, I swap in Pikachu and Body Slam does major damage against the rest of his team, securing us an easy win and a level up on Pikachu where he evolves into a Graveler. We watch as the captain backs the SSN out into the sea and then head north of Vermilion to catch an Oddish because I always forget I need a cut friend. Real quick, if you're enjoying this playthrough and would like to see the full, unedited run where I talk about cake, eat hummus, and listen to some bopping music in real time, I do upload those to my channel's full run playlist, so keep an eye out for this one in the next few days. And you know what, if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these super neat uploads. And now that I've caught an Oddish and named it ACDC, it's time to take on Lieutenant Surge. He leads off with the Voltorb and I send out my Pikachu, and you know we're going to immediately start badge boosting of course. Sonic Boom hurts, but it's pretty much the only thing to be concerned about here. After 3 boosts, Pikachu's Body Slam 1 hits Voltorb and the Imposter Pikachu. It leaves a sliver of health on Raichu, 
but gets the paralysis off, meaning we outspeed next turn, and I decide to show off a little bit, landing a Mega Punch and earning us the Thunder Badge. I don't normally talk about the Junior Trainer to the east of Cerulean, but I think this go around it deserves a mention. Nicola manages a Leech Seed and Poison Powder on her last Bell Sprout after being paralyzed, which would normally mean a really bad time because of Rap. But because Rap is doing so little damage to Nicola, Leech Seed is actually healing over it. So, kind of like the Team Rocket battle in Cerulean a few minutes ago, Nicola is once again winning by doing nothing. Making it into Rock Tunnel, I come to a realization. Giovanni isn't the only trainer with damage dealing ground type moves. This Pokemaniac has a Cubone that does some really good damage against Nicola. Luckily, it misses a whole lot of times, and Nicola gets some health back from Leech Seed. There's also a couple of Team Rocket Grunts and Sylph that have Cubone, and one that even has a Marowak, and I just completely blocked them out of my mind for some reason thinking about this run. But oh well, we get the win against this scary man in the Dark Cave, and we keep going. Coming out of Rock Tunnel and entering into Lavender Town, we immediately head up to Pokemon Tower and take on Lavender Town Rival. He leads off with a Pidgeotto that we poison as it goes for an ineffective Whirlwind and then Seed after it lands a small Quick Attack. And I'm glad we did because then it lands a Sand Attack. I really don't like that move. Nicola takes it out after a few turns on swapping to Pikachu to take on Execute, which immediately puts Pikachu to sleep. That's the third Hypnosis hit in a row against my team, but I mean, who's counting? I don't want to swap because Pikachu is tanking these barrages, and I just know the turn I swap, Execute will use Hypnosis again. Pikachu finally wakes up and gets a Body Slam off, paralyzing Execute, which misses its next Hypnosis, and I thought Body Slam would two hit, but Pikachu gets a terrible damage roll, and Execute hangs on with a sliver. It capitalizes on this by going for Pitiful Chip damage, and we get the knockout next turn. Rival sends out Gyarados, and I always underestimate Gyarados, and it knocks Pikachu out, immediately. I try for a Poison Seed combo from Nicola, but Gyarados just does way too much damage and Nicola can't keep up. So it's time for ACDC to clean up. Poison Seed knocks out Gyarados, leveling ACDC up to level 17. Will that be enough against Kadabra and Charmeleon? Yeah, no, it's not. Well, that was an embarrassing loss. But not being one too easily embarrassed, I go right back in and try again. Pidgeotto gets the Sand Attack off, of course, but goes down in two hits. But that one Sand Attack causes Body Slam to miss three turns in a row. But it eventually knocks out the Execute. Gyarados comes out and Pikachu gets a Body Slam para on it, but misses the second Body Slam because, of course, and goes down to Gyarados. Nicola comes out to hopefully clean up and he manages just to take out the Gyarados after some back and forth. Kadabra is a two hit with Tackle and Charmeleon is a five hit but it chooses to not do too much against Nicola, so we actually get the win that time. It was a little rough, but we got through it. After going to Celadon, picking up the Pokédoll and Water for the Guards, and coming back to Lavender Town, we take on the rest of Pokémon Tower, which actually goes pretty well compared to the past couple of times, thanks to Pikachu's Harden and Badge Boosting. And we rescue Mr. Fuji without incident, getting us the Poké Flute. And with the Poké Flute, I head south of Lavender, taking the route much less traveled, I actually don't think I've ever taken this route in any of my runs, and it shows by how many optionals I run into. But I make my way through the sleeping Snorlax, Nicola barely hangs on to the self-destructing Voltorb, which doesn't really matter, I just thought it was interesting, and I talk to the fishing guru's brother, who gives us the Super Rod! And in order to build anticipation, I'm just going to say that I will, in fact, be using the Super Rod in this run. Heading back down from Lavender after healing, I encounter yet another optional trainer, and Nicola evolves into Venusaur! And after deftly navigating through the maze east of Fuchsia, I have the realization that I had been using TMs on Pikachu starting from the very beginning. But who cares, it's time to use that Super Rod! And on the second encounter, we get a horsey that we named Dynamo. I was going to run Starmie for this challenge, but since I'm now allowing TMs for this run, I figured Seedra would be a fun addition to the team as a somewhat fast special attacker. Safari Zone goes about as expected. I accidentally catch a Nidoran I nickname Lightbulb, miss three Pokeballs on two different Chansey, get the Gold Teeth, pick up Surf, miss more Chansey, and then actually catch one. I nickname it Filament and really consider using it for the run, but decide against it and stick with the final team of Nicola, Pikachu, and Dynamo. And then I realized that I never picked up Fly or even a flying Pokemon, so I have to backtrack all the way to Celadon on foot 
where I get fly and catch a doduo that I name Turbine after going back to Lavender and visiting the name raider because I mashed A too fast after the battle. Since we're back in Celadon City, now is a good time to take on Erica's gym. I will save you the rage inducing para rap battles and status conditions and just say that I beat all the trainers in the gym and it's now time to take on Erica. Erica leads off with Victory Bell and I send out Dynamo to switch train a bit. She goes into a wrap as I switch into Nicola, which isn't the worst thing in the world. After a Razor Leaf trade between us, I set up a Leech Seed and she hits Nicola with an unfortunate Sleep Powder. Victory Bell misses its next Razor Leaf, but then lands next turn with Nicola still asleep. But then it goes into a wrap, which actually helps us because Leech Seed is once again healing more than Rap is hurting. Since I'm stuck in a Rap anyways, I go ahead and use the Poke Flute so Nicola can attack when he gets free. And after a couple more turns, Victory Bell goes down to a final tackle, and Dynamo levels up learning Smoke Screen, which I'm totally not going to abuse as revenge for all the sand attacks I constantly get hit with. Anyways, Erica sends out Tangela, and I swap into Dynamo and start spamming Smoke Screen. Well, when it lets me get out of Bind. But it finally goes for Constrict instead, and after landing a few smoke screens, Tangela goes down in 9 hits, thanks to Dynamo's massive special stat, and then Erica sends out Bioplume, and Pikachu takes it down in 3 body slams. I'm not sure why I didn't use Self Destruct here, but Pikachu got the job done anyways, with no issues. After clearing Celadon City Gym, I head down to Fuchsia to take on Koga's Gym. But after beating a couple trainers in the gym, I decide to put Dynamo in the daycare for some fast levels. Switch training is taking just a bit too long for me. I intended to level up to level 29 to avoid the potential of it learning over Bubble Beam, but I got a little carried away with the speed up and spamming directions and well, I leveled up to level 31 and of course overlearn Bubble Beam. I completely give up on the whole fewer TMs thing for real for real and teach Surf to Dynamo as a replacement and head it over to Sylph to take on Team Rocket. And after just a few battles, Dynamo evolves into a Seedra, cementing itself as part of the final team. And after several more battles, Pikachu finally learns its best move, Earthquake. Pikachu was already holding its own with Body Slam, pretty much one-shotting or two-shotting everything it fought, but now it's about to be absolutely unstoppable. Which, being the only physical attacker on the team, it fills its role nicely. And after beating all of the Rocket Grunts and Sylph, the whole team is at a decent level 38, and it's now time to take on the Sylph rival. He sends out Pidgeot and I send out Nicola. Nicola does a little under half with the Razor Leaf and rivals Pidgeot goes for an ineffective Whirlwind. Then it then follows up with a chip damage quick attack. Pidgeot is not nearly the threat it was in Grass Only Run, dealing just a bit more damage with quick attack before going down to two more Razor Leafs. Rival then sends out Execute that Nicola takes down below half before it attempts to counter with a Leech Seed that misses huge and a second Razor Leaf takes it out. Now it's Gyarados time. Leech Seed connects and it hits with a Dragon Rage, taking Nicola down to about half. Poison Powder misses though and it hits back with the Leer, which could have been worse. I go for a Razor Leaf taking it down to about half, it hits back with Bite. I go for another Razor Leaf and it hangs on with a Sliver, scoring a critical bite on Nicola, taking him down to 7 HP. But it wasn't enough, and one last Razor Leaf takes it out. Rival then sends out Alakazam, and I want to see how Pikachu stands up against the powerful special attacker. It survives on a bit over half health from Psybeam, but then goes for a recover next turn, ensuring its fate as Earthquake easily one-shots. Rival then sends out his Ace Charizard, which starts off with a Leer just boosting Pikachu's attack, but even with that, Earthquake's not a one-shot. Luckily, Rival is still using potions at this point, and Charizard goes down to a Body Slam, earning us the win, allowing us to use the not-so-user-friendly Teleporting Squares to take on Giovanni. Nidorino is a two-hit, Kangaskhan is a two-hit, Rhyhorn is a two-hit, and Nidoqueen is a not-two-hit, and it gets really close to knocking Dynamo out, but she manages to hit through Paralysis and get the win. Now that we're done with Sylph, and since we're already in Saffron City anyways, I head up to the gym to train and take on Sabrina. And while we're training, Graveler levels up to level 40 and evolves into Golem. And I finally replace Ivysaur Sprite with Venusaur and we have our team. Venusaur, a balanced special attacker, Golem, a defensive wall and physical attacker, and Seedra, a somewhat speedy special attacker. After fighting every trainer in the gym, our team is at an even level 40, and we're ready to take on Sabrina. She sends out Kadabra, and I send out our newly evolved Pikachu. Kadabra's psychic hits for about a third and gets the special fall, which is really not nice but Pikachu gets the one-shot with Earthquake and maybe it can hold on to that momentum. 
Mr. Mime is out next, and it went for the best option for us in Double Slap. It does incredibly little damage and goes down in one Earthquake. Next out is Venomoth that uses a Poison Powder, and it too goes down in one hit. Alakazam is last, and I don't think it can knock Pikachu out here unless it gets a critical, but it goes for a pointless recover, and Pikachu gets the fourth one hit in the battle, earning us the Marsh Badge. And with that easy victory, time to head down to Fuchsia and finish Koga's gym. And while we're fighting the last trainer in his gym, Dynamo levels up and learns a great move in Agility, allowing us a nice badge boosting option for her. With the trainers out of the way, it's time to face on Koga. He sends out Coughing, and I send out Nicola and go for a Razor Leaf just to test the waters out a bit. It does quite a bit of damage, but doesn't get the one shot. He uses up his turn though with an X attack, which is great for us, allowing Nicola to knock out the coughing next turn. Next out is Muck, and Razor Leaf does about half to it. Koga uses another X attack though, but Muck manages to hold on to a sliver after the second Razor Leaf and goes for Minimize. But luckily, Nicola hits through it, knocking out Muck. Koga's second coughing is up, and it's a replay of his first coughing going down in two hits. Down to his ace. Koga sends out Weezing. Razor Leaf does a little over a third to it, and we finally see an attack out of Koga, but Sludge is doing pitiful damage to Nicola. Razor Leaf gets Weezing down to one hit range, and Koga goes for self destruct. Letting us take the victory and the soul badge. Thanks, Koga. He also gives us the TM for Toxic, and I teach him to Dynamo over Smokescreen for two reasons. One, for big damage over time, and my team can actually handle that this run because they're not all glass cannons. And two, so I don't just spam Smokescreen on late game battles. Moving on in our second half gym run thing, we take on Blaine's gym. It's always fun to me how the first four gyms of my videos have things between them and other stuff going on, like Mount Moon, Rival Fights, SSA, and stuff like that. And then the last four gyms are just back to back to back to back. I guess that's because Seafoam Islands and Power Plant aren't really necessary. We will be going to both of those at least once in these runs, maybe more with Seafoam, just not right now. Anyways, it's time for Blaine. He sends out Growlithe and I send out Pikachu and actually outspeed, which I did not expect, and we get a one shot. Ponyta is up second and we don't outspeed, but it just goes for Tail Whip and we one shot it as well. Blaine uses a super potion on Rapidash, allowing us to, well, almost one shot it, but then it just goes for Stomp and Pikachu knocks it out. Blaine then sends out his ace Arcanine, uses a super potion, Pikachu takes it down to half health, Arcanine uses Roar, and Pikachu takes it down with Earthquake and levels up, learning Explosion! Second best move. Blaine then gives us the TM for Fire Blast, and you know what, we're teaching it a Pikachu over Body Slam, cause why not? And now for the last gym in Kanto, we of course train up against all the trainers in the gym, and Nicola levels up and we teach Growth over Leech Seed, which gives us a badge boosting move on each of my team members. And with all of the trainers defeated in his gym, it's now time to take on the final gym leader, Giovanni. He sends out Rhyhorn and I send out Nicola. And of course, I go for Growth. Rhyhorn counters with Tail Whip. Nicola uses Growth, Rhyhorn uses Tail Whip. In just two turns, we're up to four badge boosts. Another Growth, Rhyhorn of course misses with the Horn Drill. Horn Drill only affects Pokemon slower than the attacker, fun fact. Another Growth, Stomp does pretty decent damage, growth number 5, Giovanni uses guard spec, and the final growth, Rhyhorn hits with Stomp. Now, we sweep. Mega Drain one-shots the Rhyhorn, but we get the unfortunate level up, so we don't outspeed Doug Drill now, which goes for guard spec, perfect. Mega Drain one-shots Doug Drill, it's a two-hit on Nidoqueen with a Tail Whip thrown in there, two-hit on Nitto King, another level up, and we crit on Rhydon, unfortunately. But Giovanni uses another guard spec, and we knock it out next turn, earning us the Earth Badge. Now, as we make our way to Viridian Rival, you might be asking why that critical hit didn't do as much damage as a regular Mega Drain, and why I wasn't using Razor Leaf. Well, in Generation 1, Red, Blue, and Yellow, critical hits ignore all stat changes in battle. So if your attack was lowered or your opponent's defense was raised, critical hits ignore those changes. But it worked in reverse too. If your attack was raised or your opponent's defense was lowered, critical hits ignore those changes. So when we're badge boosting, we really don't want to see critical hits because it prevents our attacks from utilizing 
those super broken stat changes. And that's exactly why I didn't use Razor Leaf. Razor Leaf is a move that has a higher critical hit ratio than normal. Now in Generation 1, your critical hit chance is based on your Pokemon's base speed. The higher the base speed of your Pokemon, the greater chance it will score a critical hit. Now it turns out that Venusaur's base speed stat is high enough that when it uses Razor Leaf, a move that has a higher critical ratio than normal, it has a 255 out of 256 chance of landing a critical hit. So pretty much Razor Leaf will always crit when used by Venusaur. So we don't want to use that with the badge boost because it won't benefit from him. Anyways, enough jibber jabber, let's get to Rival. Rival sends out Pidgeot and I send out Pikachu. His Pidgeot does absolutely nothing to Pikachu as we set up a full six hardens. Earthquake, of course, one shots the Pidgeot, Rhyhorn, Execute, and Gyarados before leveling up, which was so good for us that we made it through Gyarados because it can be pretty scary. Alkazam could wreck us here with his high special, but it just goes for recover and Earthquake one shots it. And finally, Rival sends out Charizard. He uses Leer and Earthquake does about three quarters. Charizard uses another Leer and you know what? Let's flex a bit with Fire Blast and miss. Charizard uses Rage and Pikachu lands the second Fire Blast, knocking out Charizard, getting us the win. Since I went into the Elite Four really underleveled in the last two runs and had to turn around and go train, I decided to train a bit beforehand this time, getting everything up to level 50, and then I use a Rare on Pikachu so it doesn't level up mid-fight. So now, let's take on the Electrifying Elite Four. Lorelei sends out Dugong and I send out Pikachu. Aurora Beam doesn't do much to Pikachu and I get a Harden off. Dugong went for turn 2 rest, as it so often does, and I get another Harden. Pikachu is outspeeding now and Harden number 3. Dugong goes for Growl, which isn't great. Harden number 4. Dugong hits with Takedown that does absolutely nothing. Harden number 5. Dugong rests because it had to heal that 3 damage in recoil. And Harden number 6, a full set. And now, we sweep. Or maybe not. Growl hindered us a bit more than I thought it would. Dugong ends up being a two hit. Cloyster has massive defense, so I don't trust Earthquake here, opting for Fire Blast instead. And it does good damage and gets a burn off. It misses a Supersonic and Earthquake takes it out. Slowbro is a two hit with an Amnesia thrown in. Jinx might could have been a one hit with Earthquake, but we get the burn off for style and knock it out turn two. Lorelei sends out Lapras and Earthquake does just under half. Lapras hits back with Hydro Pump that takes Pikachu down to nice health. A second Earthquake leaves just a little sliver, and Lapras hits a Confuse Ray. Fire Blast for style points? No, we miss, and Lapras gets a Body Slam that, of course, paralyzes. Lorelei heals a bit, and Pikachu hurts itself. This fight is absolutely falling apart. Lapras hits with a Blizzard, but Pikachu finally hits the final Earthquake to seal the deal. We gotta have some excitement against Lorelei. It's unfortunate tradition at this point. Moving on to Bruno, he sends out Onyx and I send out Nicola, and I forget to use a rare candy, but honestly, will it even matter? I start setting up growth and it doesn't really do anything to hinder me. After a full setup, it's time to sweep, maybe for real this time? Onyx goes down in one hit, I decide to use Razor Leaf to conserve power points for right now, and I'll heal if I need to with Mega Drain. Hitmonchan's a two hit, Hitmonlee's a two hit, Onyx is almost a one hit, and Machamp is a three hit, even though it could have been a two hit, but oh well, we beat Bruno as if there was any question we would, and we're moving on. Agatha is next, and I send out Pikachu to hopefully sweep her team with Earthquake, but I fail to restore Earthquake's power points, oh no. I go ahead and one shot the first Gengar and decide to start using Harden to boost special a bit for the rest of her team but that didn't seem like a good idea in hindsight and Haunter confused Pikachu, so I swapped out a Dynamo for its Elite Four debut and Haunter immediately confused her. So I swapped into Nicola to get rid of that confusion and Haunter confused Nicola. Haunter finally used Nightshade against the swapped in Dynamo and I went for Toxic, then missed, but luckily Haunter goes for a pointless Dream Eater. The second Toxic hits, so now we can just play the long game. After a couple more swaps and Hunter doing absolutely nothing, it goes down to Dynamo Surf Toxic Combo. Golbat continues the confusion and I swap into Nicola. Nicola manages to snap out of confusion quickly and take out the Golbat with a couple of Razor Leafs. I decide to use a Growth against Arbok just for a bit of a boost and it lands a Glare paralyzing Nicola, which is really not great. Nicola is fully paralyzed next turn and Arbok uses a Screech, so now or never, Bite does really good damage to us and we get an unlucky crit, but at least we do heal a bit. 
Arbok goes for another Screech and we trade blows until it finally goes down. I try for a Poison Powder against her Ace Gengar, but it hits with the Nightshade taking Nicola down to KO range and Nicola is fully paralyzed so I use a full restore next turn. It hits with a Confuse Ray and Nicola hits himself doing major damage thanks to those Screeches. I heal again, Gengar hits another Nightshade and Nicola hits himself again taking itself down to 2 HP. This goes on for a bit, I manage to get another few growths in before Gengar confuses Nicola again and he takes himself out. But we have a trick up our sleeves. Explosion hits and we beat Agatha. A bit anticlimactic, but I just wanted it to be over. Before the final 8-4 fight, I level up Dynamo to level 52 and teach Hydro Pump over Water Gun. A pretty good upgrade. And now it's time for Lance. He sends out Gyarados and I send out Dynamo. I set up a Toxic on Gyarados and Outspeed, which is great. It goes for Hydro Pump, which does about a third. I go for Agility and start setting up, and Gyarados hits with Hyper Beam, taking Dynamo down to 33 HP. It does have to recharge, so I go for another Agility, maybe it'll pay off? But we get an unlucky critical hit, and Gyarados lands another Hyper Beam, taking out Dynamo. Gyarados was going down either way to Toxic, but Nicola comes out to finish it off. Against Dragonair, I start setting up some growths. It's not doing too much even with Hyper Beam, but then it lands a crit that knocks out Nicola. I think this is revenge for healing so much on Agatha. So it's all down to Pikachu. I remember to restore its power points, so at least we have that going for us. I start setting up Hardened. Dragonair takes Pikachu down to 32 HP with some Dragon Rages and Critical Slam, but we knock it out. I heal on the second Dragonair, which crits with a slam, but goes down in one hit. Nice. Just Aerodactyl and Dragonite left. But we get a level up. And Aerodactyl just adds to the disappointment with a Supersonic. Pikachu hits through it, but Aerodactyl hangs on with just a little bit of health. Lance uses a Hyper Potion next turn, and I go for Fire Blast that crits. Aerodactyl hits back with Bite that does nothing, and the second Fire Blast leaves just a hair of health on Aerodactyl. Really should have went for Earthquake. Aerodactyl's Hyper Beam does nothing, and Earthquake knocks it out finally. And now for Lance's Ace. Dragonite uses Agility, and Critical Earthquake almost gets the one hit. But then it crits with Slam. But Pikachu holds on with 6 HP and knocks out the Dragonite with one last Earthquake. Let's go! With two team members knocked out and one at 6 HP, Lance goes down. With the Elite Four done, I use my Rare Candies and get everything up to level 54. And now, time for the champion. He sends out Pidgeot and I send out Dynamo. Pidgeot can't do much against my team, so I start setting up Agility. After 3, Hydro Pump hits for over half and Surf takes it out. For Alakazam, I go for Toxic to counteract its recover, but miss, and it funnily enough goes for recover. We hit next turn and it sets up a Reflect. Hydro Pump takes Alakazam down to just under half and it hits back with Psybeam that crits and does pretty big damage, but the second Hydro Pump takes it down. Not too worried about Rhydon and goes down in 2 hits. Executor is next, and this thing is pretty bulky, so it does present a bit of a challenge. Surf looks to be a 4 or 5 hit, and it goes for Barrage, getting a crit and taking Dynamo down to 12 HP. Now's a good time to swap, so I put in Nicola, who immediately gets put to sleep and doesn't wake up for 5 turns and is down to 29 HP. Mega Drain does nothing and only heals up to 40 HP. Probably should have expected that. After some back and forth, Nicola gets a poison off on Executor, but ultimately goes down. With poison going, it will eventually get knocked out. It's just a matter of hanging on the fight. I send out Pikachu and go for Fire Blast because I forget what challenge I'm playing and it does pathetic damage and Executor puts Pikachu to sleep. But Pikachu wakes up turn one Tanks a barrage, and since Executor is going down anyways, I start setting up Harden for the rest of the fight. Executor finally succumbs to the poison, and Rival sends out Gyarados that hangs on with about a quarter health from an earthquake. It hits back with a Dragon Rage that takes Pikachu down to under half, but a Flex Fire Blast takes it down. And here we go. Rival's Ace Charizard. I mean, you already know what I'm going to do. It hits with Slash, taking Pikachu down to 23 HP, but Pikachu uses Explosion and one-shots the Charizard, getting us the win against the champion. And there we have it, Pokemon Red, but everything is a mono-electric type. So, how easy was this challenge? There's a few things we can take into account on this run. 
For one, we lost like, what, maybe three battles this whole run, if even that. Very little hit for super effective damage against us, and what did was pretty easily taken care of. And we made it through the Elite Four and Champion fight on our first try. Now, compiling all that into my super scientific secret equation, I'm going to put electric type only on the far left easy side of the scale. This run was insanely easy. Since there were so few type advantages and disadvantages to worry about, it was quite literally just using strong moves and having good stats. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it. This series will continue soon with a run that I'm excited about, and maybe it'll be a bit more interesting than this one was. The next video in this series will be Pokemon Red, but everything is mono dark type. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And like I said earlier in this video, I plan on uploading the full runs of these challenges to the channel's full run playlist. So if you're interested in seeing the full four hour runs and watching my mistakes in real time, be sure to check that out. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.